In this video, I have a window motor set up so that we can see if the polarity will make the window motor spin one direction and then when we reverse the polarity, have it spin the other way. And this is what we're expecting because by design, we want the window to go up or down. It's not like the coolant fan or the blower motor where we really only want it to spin in one direction because we designed the fan to spin a certain way. But in this case, we want the motor to go up or down so by reversing polarity, that's the way we do it. And then they use a combination of switches so that the driver and the passengers each have a way of moving the different windows up and down. So let's turn it on and see which way it goes. Right now I have positive battery going to the bottom terminal and the top terminal on the motor is grounded. And you can see that the motor is spinning clockwise. And we'll just let it run a couple seconds and then I'll turn it off. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna reverse the leads at the battery because it's easier to do it that way. So let's try that. Okay, so I have the leads reversed at the battery and we're gonna turn it on again and we're expecting it to spin in the counterclockwise direction. So let's see if it does. All right, so as you can see, it's spinning counterclockwise and for the window motor to operate, we really just need power load and ground just like any other device like a bulb or a fan or a horn or any of the other devices we've talked about in the other programs. So if a window motor was not working, our job would be to find out is it getting the 12 volts that it needs and does it have a ground path? In the next video, we'll investigate the description and operation of how a window schematic works on a car. We're gonna start with some older cars because the older cars have the window motor system in its simpler form, and you have to understand the fundamentals of how that works before you can even consider a newer vehicle that has computers and modules controlling everything. And for the do-it-yourselfer, if you don't have access to a scanner that can talk to the window module or the door module or whatever other modules are being used to control the window motor on that car, your ability to diagnose a newer car will be limited. But there are still some things that you can check if you have a schematic for the car you are working on, even if it is newer you can still try to find the power load and ground part of the circuit and you may be able to make some tests that might find the problem and save you some money. There's a lot that goes into the newer designs on the cars. Some cars will even have the window motor move a little bit when you open the door or move a little bit when you lower the convertible top so that the window doesn't put pressure on the weather strip when you're trying to lower the convertible top or just even opening the car door on some cars. So let's take a look at the schematics.